I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Um, so who here has ever wanted to try out a module on CPAN that solved uh, your particular problem and uh, was very grumpy at trying to get it installed? You know, either your, the sysadmins don't trust you on the particular box, so you don't have sudo, or you can't install the modules, and for whatever reason you've never bothered to learn local lib or Perl brew or something like that. Anyways, um, this is how you fix it. Um, so uh, let's let's talk a little bit about clouds, uh, specifically Meta CPAN. Who here knows about Meta CPAN? <gasps> okay, everyone should know about Meta CPAN. Meta CPAN is awesome. Um, basically, uh, the Meta CPAN project was born out of the frustration with search.cpan.org. Um, there were a lot of glaring problems with that particular site, and uh, people offered time and time again to just let me have the source and I'll patch it. And, and that was not very forthcoming. So they said, okay, well, in true open source fashion, we'll just make our own. And so that's what they did. Uh, MetaCPAN is based on uh, some great technology called Elasticsearch, which is based on Lucene. And essentially, they index all of CPAN so that you can search it. They basically explode all of the tarballs so that you can, you can search and do whatever. Uh, and then, of course, store metadata about all of the modules so that you can actually do searching. Um, so, uh, why would you ever use MetaCPAN? Uh, because, one, you can fork it. You can run your own MetaCPAN locally. Uh, you can contribute upstream. Uh, and the API is actually a, a very thin API on top of what Elasticsearch provides. Uh, so it's incredibly easy to use and to get results out of. Uh, so how do you use MetaCPAN? Uh, specifically from code, and that is where CloudPan comes in. So I have a little story to tell. Uh, this was the QA Hackathon in 2011, I think, 2012, 2011, either way, um, and, no, it was, it was last year's. Um, and so I was taking a look at the Meta CPAN API because uh, we wanted to hack it into the, the CPAN client that shipped along with Perl, uh, but of course it requires like HTTP Tiny and, and, and some other things like that to be able to talk. Uh, so, I, one, I, I wrote a, a, a Meta CPAN API tiny, which only used four modules and, and things that, you know, you could ship and it would just be default. Uh, and what fell out of that was uh, there is uh, an API method uh, for Meta CPAN uh, that basically will give you the source to any file that you ask for. Uh, so, you can, you can kind of see where this is going. Um, so I said, oh, that's very interesting. I know that there's a facility um, uh, specifically involving lots and lots of magic. And um, uh, basically what I ended up with was an ink hook. Uh, who here has ever fussed with, with ink at all? Ah, there you go. Uh, I see the gray here. Oh, you mean implementation? What? Oh, oh, you mean implementation? Okay, ah, okay. uh, yeah, okay, right, right, right. Um, so ink is very, uh, it's, it's kind of scary because it's not just a matter of where to look for modules. Uh, it can also contain uh, other data structures that uh, alter the behavior of ink. Um, so there's, uh, there's a couple of ways that you can basically hook into the process for determining where code is on the system to load. And, uh, and we're going to talk about a couple of them. Uh, one, you can just return a code reference. Uh, so you can basically stuff a code reference into, into at ink, and uh, as it comes across that entry, uh, it will then execute that code reference with the particular munged name and expect you to basically return something to it. Uh, I believe the, the exact documentation for it says uh, return lines. Um, and the other thing that you could do is uh, an array reference. Uh, which basically will have the code reference and then some sort of state or argument to pass along with it. Uh, and, then, uh, and then an object uh, which implements a particular interface uh, that's the ink interface, ink method. Um, so what does CloudPan do? It does the first one, basically a, a code reference that returns a file handle. So at this point in my demonstration, I would actually show you how this works live. Um, but I have a terrible, uh, terrible internet problems here. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe okay, it's going to work now. Hold on. So, uh, so this is, this is, let's try it. Hold on. Let's see. Can I, can I resolve Google? 
temporary response not set to the ping? No. Uh, can I ping something that I know? Um, yeah, this is all sorts of disappointing. Um, let me try, try connecting to the network one more time. It's also unfortunately warm in here. It's warm outside. <laughs> Who has a network connection? I got you. Know, with you. Really? I like this idea. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, let's see here. Which which second one? Yeah, I'm looking for the I'm looking for the SSID on here. The second one. Oh, I see it. Got it. All right. Passcode. So this is going to be a little difficult to see. Let me uh, let me see if I can adjust the uh, terminal size.
Question. Uh, so if I were to like, hold on, let me fix the damn font size here. So I'm just like the same so I can still. It's a room full of nerds, we can't fix it. I know, right? Of course. Okay, so that's fine. The, the problem is probably the outside machine. I'm running a virtual machine. Shitty thing about technical problems. Of course, it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, it's not going to be resolved. Okay, so that looks right to you. So, okay, so the whole point of this is to basically, at runtime, hit MetaCPAN via the file API and actually pull the source down uh, for, for all of the modules that you don't have installed uh, and just have it work at runtime. Uh, so the example that I was going to show you was Dancer. Dancer is actually very clean uh, in that uh, all of its modules are pure Perl. And, uh, the, the way that this magic works is uh, CloudPan actually installs its ink hook at the very end of ink uh, so that it will exhaust the file system first to make sure that it's not actually local uh, and then they'll go and fetch it. Uh, there's a couple of options too. Uh, one of them is you can persist what you download. Uh, by default, what it does is uh, writes everything to temporary file handles and then passes those on to Perl to be parsed and then actually turn into, turn into uh, code that you execute. Uh, so, it's, um, yeah, it's a very disappointing demo. I sincerely apologize. Uh, the the uh, network here is uh, unfortunately not uh, conducive to doing live demos across it. Uh, so, but for grins, we can, uh, we can take a look at the code. Uh, and it's actually very simple. Um, Um, increase that. I, I know that's going to be teeny tiny. I have a better idea. How about I? How about I just open it a bit in here? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Okay. And oh my God, this is just horrendous. Let's see. Um, so basically, just pull in, pull in MetaCPAN API tiny. Uh, and some symbol. Uh, IO all. If you're not familiar with IO all, it, it's uh, uh, an Inky module. It's fantastic. Uh, it uh, basically wraps up all of the IO stuff that you could ever possibly want to do and uh, makes it magical for you so that you don't have to uh, actually open a file. And it's great for one liners uh, and quick scripts. Um, but let's see here. Uh, pretty much just 
basically doing a fetch uh, search to basically find the module that you're looking for based on the path. And uh, here, I'll scratch down so you can actually see. Um, it looks like Elasticsearch. It is Elasticsearch. You should be able to use Elasticsearch and directly look into that. You don't the, the, so, it's, it's, so here's the here's the problem uh, with with the Medicine Pen API. It um, I think it does a little bit of overwriting and provides its own endpoints to a couple of things. Like it's a very thin layer. Uh, so some things, yes, if you know Elasticsearch, you can immediately apply the same right. API to. Uh, but I think in in this case for the file, I don't know if it stores the actual complete document. Like it may have. It, I think it has to uncompress the tarball to make it. Uh, so that's that's why the uh, yes you apply the the elastic search to do the search but then the file call itself um, it uh, let's see it seems to just uh, give you a direct result of its own elastic search I mean you're you're crawling the results there with it it's it's seems like you can right. remove those errors actually uh, yeah I you yeah you can you can remove, I tend to be explicit. So I, I understand. Um, in fact, I think this is this is an old version of the code. I'm just watching. It looks funny. Uh, uh, yeah. I of course, that's not going to work even. I came in, uh, I came in late. Is this supposed to uh, to be a replacement for existing CPU interface? Like so no, 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 no. Of course not. Uh, in fact, don't run this in production ever, ever. If you do and it breaks, I am not responsible. I wash my hands of the whole thing. Um, uh, because there, there is no security. It literally just makes a plain HTTP call to MedCPAN and, and pulls down whatever. So if you get man in the middle while doing this, it's your own damn fault. Um, so uh, basically what it's supposed to do is just be uh, helpful when you're doing development. You want to test out a bunch of modules. Yes? I uh, have a sort of mass application of kind of the same technique to use an older version of an existing module. As that is, uh, you have a module installed, but you want to try a previous version. So uh, I guess the code will be quite different from what it is now. Sure. So but you'd have to you'd have to do a couple of different things. Uh, one, you'd probably have to put the ink hook at the front. Yeah. Uh, and then and then you would have to make decisions based on what you found in the file system. You'd have to basically duplicate the functionality of ink. Uh, it's it's completely doable. Um, being able to request specific versions of modules uh, via Cloud Pan is something that's that's not implemented at the moment because uh, I think the input facility doesn't give you uh, the version that you're looking for. It just wants to try and load the module. Then after it loads the module, it checks the version and see if it's what you want, um, which kind of sucks for version checking, right? Uh, so like uh, that's that's kind of one of the problems uh, in implementing. So it would be nice if there was a, a more complex API to Medicine. Well, I don't think to Medicine can. I think like the ink facility could use a little bit of love. Uh, so that you could you could actually check versions and do things without having to basically load up all of the code uh, and, and make versions. Uh, and, and make versions essentially um, separate from code execution. Just look at it as the first thing in the ink, then can't you alter the package names so that they have like version info in them? Yeah, you could probably do that. Uh, if you like if you were to basically go through your entire ink and then tag the versions at the end. Uh, then yeah, you don't need to do that when you want a specific version, the other ones could just be whatever. Mm -hmm. So anyways, the, the code is out there on, on GitHub uh, in Perez. Uh, if you want to take a look at it, and uh, if you have future requests, or if you want to hack on it yourself, you're more than welcome to. Uh, so, yeah. No, no, no clapping. That was. Uh, that was hard. You take the clap. <laughs>